Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. In the name of our risen and victorious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Happy Easter, everyone. Great to see everyone here this morning and worshiping with, with us here and also online. The order of service we're following is in your bulletin today or on the screen. Let's continue with our first hymn, hymn 143, verses 1 to 3. Please stand. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins. And trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We'll continue with our song of joy, a hymn of response, verses 4 and 5 of hymn 143.
Almighty God, by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you conquered death and opened the gate to eternal life. Grant that we, who have been raised with him through baptism, may walk in the newness of life and ever rejoice in the hope of sharing his glory through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be dominion and praise now and forever. Please be seated. On this Easter morning, our first lesson comes to us from the Old Testament book of Isaiah, chapter 12, verses 1 through 6. God, in his mercy, gave to Isaiah this beautiful picture of what it was going to be like in the joy of forgiveness, the forgiveness that Jesus guarantees to us in Easter. We read, we read now these words of Isaiah. In that day, you will say, I will praise you, Lord. Although you were angry with me, your anger has turned away, and you have comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself, is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. With joy you will now draw water from the wells of salvation. In that day you will say, Give praise to the Lord. Proclaim his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. And proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord. For he has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world. Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion. For great is the Holy One of Israel among you. This is the word of our Lord. We continue with our choir's anthem.
Our second lesson for our reading this morning on this Easter day comes to us from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, reading from chapter 15, verses 51 to 57. The Apostle Paul explains to us the joy again on this side of Easter of how awesome it is that Jesus was raised from the dead. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the imperishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of our Lord. And now going back to a beautiful part of our worship service, which would be the verse of the day with the Alleluia's. And we omitted the Alleluia's during the Lenten season to really see the somberness and, the, and the, the hard suffering Jesus had to go through for us. But with his victory now, we sing the Alleluia's again to his glory and read the verse that we have printed for us and sing his, his praise. Alleluia, Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia. Please stand now as we read the gospel lesson for today, which also serves as our text for our sermon. When the Sabbath was over, 
Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early in the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, Who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone, because they were afraid. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. We continue with our hymn of the day. It's hymn number 160, This Joyful Easter Tide. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia. God's grace and his peace and his mercy belong to you. From God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, our victorious Redeemer, Jesus. Amen. The word for meditation day is our gospel lesson. It's Mark chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. and includes these words that the angel said. Don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. 
But go tell his disciples, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. This is the word of our Lord. In the name of our Savior Jesus, dear fellow believers, redeemed and disciples of Christ, in September of 2022, there's a gentleman named Herman Williams. He's a man who was convicted of murder and was placed into prison. 30 years after that conviction and 30 years after being put into prison, there was some new evidence, some new proof that said he didn't commit that crime. It was DNA proof. And that was all the court needed to say, Mr. Williams, you are free to go. You are not the one who was convicted of this crime. You are released. You may freely leave the prison. You can imagine the joy of Mr. Williams' heart when finally, and he knew it, he was innocent, he could actually walk out of prison, a free man. Of course, the media was there. They wanted to find out that all-encompassing question right away. The inquiring minds wanted to know, Mr. Williams, how do you feel having been released from prison? I think we can all guess. But what was his comment? He says, I feel vindicated. No doubt. And we look up the word vindicated in Merriam-Webster's dictionary, the definition is this of vindication to be free from allegation or blame. Mr. Williams hit the word dead on. He was free from any allegations, free from any blame. And there he stood as a free man outside of prison. Today's theme for Easter is vindication. And having followed all Lenten season long of Jesus being put on trial, we know without a doubt that Jesus is innocent of all charges, that he had never sinned, that he was our perfect substitute in life, being perfect for us in every sense of the word. But yet God made him who had no sin to be sin for us. Jesus is willing to take all of our guilt and all of our sin and all of our wrongs and all of the punishment that was to come along with it, the curse of sin included, and to be the one who would be punished, to be put into prison, you could say, to suffer the depths of hell in your place and mine. And on Easter Sunday, by Jesus rising from the dead, bursting out of the the gates of the grave, Jesus could say too, don't you think? I feel vindicated. But not in a sinful, pride-like self, but in a word that describes the joy that you and I can actually enjoy it with him. So this morning as we take a few minutes and dive into these words that the angel said. He is risen. He is not here. In other words, Jesus is alive. He's been vindicated. May we rejoice in that vindication Jesus brings us. But may we see how it pours over into every aspect of our life, knowing that in God's eyes, for Jesus' sake, you and I are vindicated as Jesus is vindicated. That wasn't the the picture, though, right away. And we go back three days, well, according to the way the Jewish calendar counts, three parts of days, and go back to Friday, because each day isn't a 24-hour period, but it's just parts of day. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you got three days ago, Jesus died and was buried, and it didn't look good. You know, the disciples were there, the, the crowds were there, the women who served him were there, and Jesus looked like he was guilty. Guilty of everything, and he was. God caused him to be guilty for us. Not that he had guilt of his own, but he took the guilt of our sins. Every one of them on his own shoulders. So in God's eyes, Jesus was guilty. And he did pay the price and the penalty for sin. He was put into the prison and suffered the eternal damnation for hell. For you and me once and for all. And again, it was what it was. 
But on Easter when Jesus rose, God was proclaiming to the entire world, without a doubt, that Jesus was now the one who paid the price, served the sentence, and is as who he says he was, the Redeemer, the Messiah, the Savior, the Lamb of God, who has taken away the sins of the whole world. Easter is God's exclamation point. Easter is God's proof to you and to me that the sins that we've committed, the ones that the whole world has committed, have been accounted for and paid for in Jesus. One of my most favorite passages in Scripture is Romans chapter 4, verse 25 where it says he was delivered over to death for our sins, but he was raised to life for our justification. It explains everything that happened on this holy weekend. Where on one hand, Jesus was delivered over for our sins. He was offered up as the lamb, the sacrifice. But because God accepted that sacrifice of Jesus as full payment for our sins, God's justified you and me classifies us as vindicated, free from accusation, free from blame, free from allegation. God raised his son from the dead. In other words, the feeling of the ladies that we read about here, although it was real, didn't have to be felt. But how did the ladies feel? See, the ladies on Easter Sunday morning knew what Jesus had talked about. They knew what he had told them about and taught them how he was going to die and on the third day be raised again. But did they believe it wholeheartedly? I mean, they saw everything up to his burial. But what about his resurrection? To go back into these words of Mark, it doesn't seem like they were so convinced that Jesus was going to be raised from the dead. They doubted his promise. How does Mark tell us? He tells us again that the ladies were going to go away and prepare Jesus' body for burial. They still believed that Jesus was going to be in that grave. But when they got there, what did they find? They found an empty grave, a stone that had been rolled and blown away, and they saw a young man sitting on the spot where Jesus was buried. And they knew where it was because they saw how Jesus was buried there. But that was an angel. And the angel said, Jesus is alive, just like he said. How many times do we doubt God's words? How many times does God make promises to us? And it sounds really good, but it can go in one ear and out the other. How many times don't we trust him? Probably too many to count, right? But for those times that we've doubted God's word and for all of our sins, again, that's why Jesus came, to pay for all of them. To make us clean in God's sight and forgiven in his sight and redeemed and restored and vindicated and justified. Jesus has vindicated you and me. We are free from the allegations and the blame of sin and his resurrection proves it. Praise be to the Lord for that and for Easter Sunday of being that visual concrete evidence The evidence that we have a savior from sin. And that's exactly what it was. Easter was Jesus' way of saying, for all those people, especially then, who couldn't wait to see Jesus get on the cross, those who doubted him, those who put him there and wondered, really, is this the Son of God? Jesus could stand outside that tomb and feel, in a sense, vindicated and say, I am the Savior, I am the Lord. I am the light of life. Only through me can you come to my Father and be saved. Thank Jesus for being that visual vindication of our sins and being the Savior that we need. But we need him more than we can imagine. I mean, there's lots of things that can go on in our own life that can make us feel like the ladies too. Sometimes it's death. Sometimes it's just life. But we wonder... Could really Jesus, could he really take care of us? Could he really keep his word? Yes, Jesus put those fears of theirs to an end. But again, they they weren't expecting this, which is why Mark says they ran off in fear. But they had a message. 
A message that they would eventually see that day as being real. Jesus would appear to them to reassure them. Jesus appeared to his disciples. He appeared to Peter. He appeared to the Emmaus disciples. He appeared to the disciples who were locked in an upper room for fear of the Jews. He appeared to them again the following Sunday night with even Thomas there. And he appeared even to 500 witnesses at one time to show himself, I am the Savior, without a doubt. With all those witnesses, who could challenge that? I mean, it's in God's word to begin with, which is true. But all these witnesses, if they were here, could tell us the same thing. Jesus is alive. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And that tells us there's much more vindication for us to enjoy. Easter is a vindication that also tells us that our faith is where it needs to be. You know, where do we put our faith? Where do we put our trust? The devil would rather have us put it in ourselves and what we can do, especially for our own salvation and to get us through the tough times of life. It's all about me and my my superhuman strength and my my being able to withstand trials and temptations to have that, you know, indemnable human stiff upper lip. But God tells us Jesus is our refuge and our strength. And the fact that he has saved us tells us we can go to him for everything and anything. Even our fears about our own time and our own brevity of time. And for those of us who have had family die, we, it makes us step back for a minute and, and think about the brevity of life and the, and the tenderness of life and how quickly it can be snuffed out. But Jesus tells us because he lives, we also will live. He tells us that he'll be with us every step of the way as the victorious Lord, the one who's overcome all things. And we have no fear because our Savior has promised to be with us wherever we go. And he'll never turn his back on us whatsoever. It reminds us of the vindication that again, Jesus took our sins upon himself. It wasn't up to you. It wasn't up to me. And the fact that he exclaimed so clearly on the cross My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? With that same loud voice, he says it's finished. And he's the living guarantee that our sins are paid in full. Vindication. Even our deepest, darkest of sins has been covered. All those heinous ones that we don't want to even think about. The ones we don't want to address. Even the ones that we're embarrassed. Maybe even talk to God about. If Peter could be reassured of his forgiveness as Jesus appeared to him and reassured him, who denied his Savior, not once, not twice, but three times, even after Jesus predicted it, and how his heart just sunk and and wondered, could God ever love me? Could Jesus ever forgive me? If Jesus could forgive him, your sins are forgiven too. Vindication is yours. Your slate is wiped clean. What a joy to know that. And then a vindication again, which is ours, like the words of Job said. Not only in life are we good in God's eyes, not only in death do we have nothing to fear, but like Job said, I know that my Redeemer lives, and that in the end I, he will stand upon the earth, yet in my flesh I will see God. You see, Jesus' resurrection was also a fulfillment of what Job is talking about. That when we do pass away, and unless the Lord returns first, we're all going to taste of that. But on the last day, we get to see vindication in a sense we've never tasted it before. The holiness, the glory, the the exaltation of being not only with Jesus, but to have bodies just like his. To enjoy eternity forever with our Savior. That's what today is all about. That's the joy of Jesus' resurrection. The vindication of sins forgiven. The vindication of the Lord being with us. The vindication of not having to have any fear. The vindication of not having to feel the guilt that the devil wants us to be laden with for our sins because Jesus has already paid for them. We don't have to feel that. And the vindication to know that when Jesus returns, we're going to be with him forever. Like Jesus said, because I live, you also will live. So, dear friends in Christ, 
Although Mr. Williams cried out in a very confident voice, I feel vindicated. Could we not say that even more? Because yes, we do stand vindicated in the eyes of one that counts all the more, in God's eyes. And so for Jesus' sake, not only has we been, have we been forgiven our sins, but Jesus has been raised to prove that to you and me, that we are vindicated and because he lives, you and I will live forever. Praise the Lord for that vindication. Amen. And now the peace of God that surpasses our human understanding will guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's continue now with our song of praise to the Lord, our song of joy. It's hymn number 167, verses 2 and 5. <laughs> Please be seated now as we gather our thank offering to our Savior and also sing our offering hymn. Please stand now as we offer our prayers. It's a response of Easter prayer. So please follow along in your bulletins or on the screen and join in for the parts for the congregation. O Lord, our strength, our song, and our salvation, you fulfilled your promises by the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, from the dead. In your compassion, you sent Christ, the Good Shepherd, who laid down his life to rescue the lost. Lift our eyes heavenward 
to see him who lives to make intercession for the saints and grant us confidence in the greatness of his power. Keep before us the vision of your redeemed people standing before your throne and singing the song of victory. Make us instruments of your peace as we bring the good news of hope and new life to those around us. Guide us in the use of all that you have entrusted to us, our time, our talents, and our treasures. Merciful Lord Jesus, grant healing to the sick and strengthen the faith of the suffering and the dying. Assure them of your abiding presence and comfort them with the hope of eternal life. Lord, this morning we ask you to bless Mike Faw, who is still recovering from a motorcycle accident. And we ask you to be with Brian Haar, who is enduring further medical emergencies. Dear Jesus, since you are the Lord and the great physician of body and soul, we know that you chasten and you heal. We would ask that you would look with mercy upon these people of yours. If it is your will, continue to spare their lives and restore their strength. But you gave your Son to bear our infirmities and sicknesses, Heavenly Father. So deal compassionately with your servants and bless the medical means employed on their behalf with your healing power. We commit them to your gracious mercy and protection, for you are a faithful and merciful Lord. And Lord, we also ask you to hear us this morning as we bring to you our private petitions. Gracious Father, you have restored to us the joy of your salvation. With happy hearts, we come before you and say, Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated, and we'll sing the first four verses of I Know That My Redeemer Lives.
Please stand for prayer. Following our prayer, we'll continue with our benediction. But please note our benediction is also a hymn. Uh, it's a hymn of three verses. I'll sing the first verse. You'll get to sing the second verse, and then together we'll sing the third. But again, that follows our prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for teaching us the things you want us to believe and do. Help us by your Holy Spirit to keep your word in pure hearts, that we may be strengthened in faith, guided in holiness, and comforted in life and in death. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. May the grace of Christ our Savior and the Father's boundless love with the Holy Spirit's favor rest upon us from above. seated as we conclude our worship with the final four verses of I Know That My Redeemer Lives. Let's stand to sing verse 8. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. Happy Easter to all of you, and God's blessings to you on this Easter Sunday. Uh, the announcements that are there for you are in your bulletin. Just a couple reiterations, maybe, of a few of them, and maybe a couple new ones. Um, in the entryway, you'll find your April calendars for the month. Please make sure you take one of those on your way home. Also, during the month of, of uh, April, Great Plains Lutheran is having something called a Panther Palooza. It is their uh, fall festival. It is a fundraiser for them, for their, for their fine arts. If you would like to be part of that or just check it all out, um, there is a, uh, a little flyer out in the entryway. It looks like this. You can gather some information on there. Um, there's an online type of thing you can do with that. And so uh, you can go there. Or you can even be there at Great Plains um, on uh, April 13th from 2 to 6 if you'd like to be part of that. And then also, I've been uh, asked to announce 
that if you have uh, bought and, and shared a poinsettia, not poinsettia, look where my brain is, it's Christmas, um, an Easter lily today, um, please come up and grab yours and take them home and enjoy them. Um, they're basically in full bloom. So enjoy them now and, and uh, enjoy what the meaning of them is. Again, new life in Christ. It is ours. And they look like a trumpet. They proclaim that good news and they smell good too. So have a great morning and a happy Easter.